What's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at the I2P Easy Install Bundle for Windows. So in case you haven't heard of I2P, it's an anonymous network or network you can use to be anonymous yourself, very similar to the Tor network. And it also has hidden services that you can only find in the I2P network, again, similar to the Onion sites that you can only visit in the Tor browser. But I2P is actually better than Tor in some ways. Hidden services actually tend to be more stable there. Dread, for example, was able to run for the past couple of months just fine on I2P, but it was getting DDoS to hell on Tor and wasn't available for most people. But I2P, despite being more useful in some ways, is nowhere near as popular as Tor due to it being much more difficult to set up, at least historically, this was the case. So this easy install bundle, uh, I'm very happy to see because I expected to take away a lot of that complexity. Uh, hopefully it takes away the process of having the end user set up or forward the port that they were going to use for I2P on their router and then the process where they have to configure the proxy settings in the browser that they want to visit I2P sites with. I think those two steps in particular have tripped a lot of people up. Uh, so let's get into it. Well, actually, before we get into it, I guess I should just say, um, obviously, I'm going to be setting up I2P and using it on Windows, which is something that I really don't recommend doing, right? Because I2P is an application, it's an anonymizing network, but Windows is not a very good operating system for uh, most darknet activities. So if you're going to use it to just visit some sites, you know, maybe go and visit Dread or whatever, uh, that's fine. But don't get into any darknet shenanigans or tomfoolery when using Windows. Bad idea. Uh, so what do we want? I think it's just this one, right? Um, yeah, because we don't want the Java, which I guess that's what that is, like the classic Java. So we'll do ITP Easy Install Bundle for Windows. And we should probably read this. So this is an all-in-one installer for Windows 10. I'm using Windows 11, so hopefully that's not a problem. Um, it's built on the premise that ITP should be easy. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, so what do I need to use it? Just Firefox or the Tor browser. Okay, so I, um, I don't think I have Firefox on here. So why don't I go ahead and just download Tor. Because that's what I was um, wondering, whether or not they would include some kind of browser, but I guess they just expect you to use Firefox or Tor, which is totally fine. I think someone was asking me that uh, in the last ITP video I did, like, oh, you know, how do you configure, what browser should you use? And you could just use Tor. I mean, you could very easily create a separate browser profile in Tor. I mean, Tor is based off of Firefox. Um, oh, it looks like. I already had it on, but whatever, I'll just update Tor. Yeah, so you could just use Tor and then normally when you would install ITP without an easy install, you would just be reconfiguring the proxy settings to connect to ITP instead of Tor. Uh, so I don't need to do that, but now I know I have Tor. Um, all right, so it looks like that's the only thing I really need. How do I use it? Download, install Firefox. Okay, we did that. And then it looks like I run this. Okay, we'll save it. 140 meg. You, you think that they could have tried to include a browser there. But I think they said that there's a profile. Firefox profile is included, yeah, okay. Maybe it'll put it into Tor. I mean, Tor is based on Firefox, so maybe it'll give me an option. Let's see. So you get to choose your language, and then here's the MIT license, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then we will install it. Look at that, <laughs> app data local I2P easy. Great folder name. All right, that was pretty quick. And let's start I2P. All right, so let's see, is it going to, oh, and let's, um, sure, just allow it everywhere. 
Okay, so this should let me through the firewall. So we shouldn't get that uh, that setting that people often get when they configure I2P saying that it's firewalled and that you can't actually connect to anything. I see my Tor browser popped up. Okay, so I'm in the I2P router console. I guess this automatically just applied the profile setting to Tor. All right, so let's see, it's supported by volunteer translators on Transifex. Okay. Um, sure. We'll do a dark theme. Ooh, that looks nice. Full screen this. And let's see, yeah, next. Check your internet connection. Uh, sure. Okay, so a bandwidth test is in progress. And this will probably take a few minutes. All right, so it says that the bandwidth test completed. That was pretty quick. And this is what it's setting for me automatically, um, which is probably higher than most people since I have pretty good internet. Um, which actually, this also brings me to another thing I should bring up about I2P. One of the differences between I2P and Tor is that it's peer to peer. I think they say that, yeah, it's peer to peer. So. The great thing about this is anyone who's going on I2P, whether you're browsing it, you're just curious, uh, or you're somebody who really needs it, right? Because there's people who need to use these anonymizing networks, say if they're living in an oppressive country, or if they're a journalist, there's plenty of legitimate uses for these. Um, so everyone who's using it is going to be contributing some bandwidth. They're going to be contributing to the network instead of the model that we have with Tor, where millions and millions of people use Tor every single day, and they're basically using that bandwidth, right? There's only a certain amount of bandwidth that the whole Tor network has. Millions of people are using it, but only about 6,000 people run relays, which those are the only people contributing the bandwidth. So. You know, you've got this like thousand to one trade off as far as who's using the bandwidth uh, and who's sucking it up or who's using the bandwidth and who's contributing it. Uh, with I2P, everyone is going to be contributing bandwidth. And obviously you can change these parameters around, right? Like you could try to um, uh, reduce your share, but let's see, does it limit how much you can reduce your share? No. But I believe if you reduce it too much, it can almost kind of kick you out of the network. Um, not 100% sure about that. But this is why I really like I2P and why I think in a lot of ways it's going to be the future of the darknet. It's, it's not perfect. Um, probably got to deep dive a little bit more and figure out sort of the pros and cons of I2P versus Tor. But definitely one of the pros, uh, at least according to Hugbunter, is if you're running a... Uh, darknet service, which he runs Dread, a hidden service, um, it's a lot harder for it to get DDoSed and taken offline on I2P versus Tor. So anyway, let's just go ahead with this, uh, with the automatic configuration. And you can just leave this running. I mean, if you're someone like me who's got a great internet connection, I mean, eventually I'm going to leave this running on probably... Uh, the Rock Pro 64, one of those SBCs. I just need to get a fan for it. Um, okay, let's just go next. Welcome to the Invisible Internet. Okay, looks like we're finished. Yeah, so here I can see the, um, the bandwidth in and out. No, okay, my network is saying that it's firewalled. So I probably do still have to do that. Um, probably still have to port forward it on my router. Uh, but let me check. Let me see, because most people who are doing this, 
the whole point is you want to go to an I2P site, right? So let me see if that works, because um, I am still contributing some bandwidth to the network, which is also great, just not as much as I could be since, of course, the network's firewalled. All right, I've had the network running for about 11 minutes now. Uh, they say let it run for a little bit before you try connecting to any EAP site. So now let's try uh, planet I2P or planet dot I2P. So this would be an example of an EAP site. Any EAP sites that you're going to visit in I2P, they're going to end with that dot I2P. And hey, there we go. It is working. So let's see. Uh, what else we have here? Oh, actually, there's... Oh, that's an onion site. Okay. Yeah, the Tor blog. Okay, those are just default uh, Tor things. But let's try, like, bigbrother.itp. I think that's another one. Okay, it's saying it's not found, so I could try using a jump service. This is what kind of happens sometimes when, um, oh, it's dead, okay. Oh, it hasn't been seen in a while. <laughs> okay, well, this one worked at least. This is generally one of the first I2P sites that's uh, recommended to view. This was on the list that I looked up when I just looked up I2P sites. So yeah, you can see it's working. Um, Again, it is firewalled, so All right, let me go to the, uh, the router console. It is firewalled, so the way that you would deal with this is um, figure out which port it's using for ITP. Um, I don't think I can go into that without showing my IP, so we're not going to do that. but figure out which port it's um, figure out which port it's using for ITP and then just forward that on your router and then you won't be firewalled and what that'll do is it'll allow your uh, bandwidth in and out to be higher you'll be able to contribute more to the network um, possibly be able to reach more sites as well and torrents that's another thing that you can do over ITP is see torrents and well seed and download torrents and it basically allows you to do that without exposing your ip address uh so that's a really cool thing i i think some people i i don't think it's that popular to download torrents over tor but it's not recommended either way you know tor is one of those networks where if you torrent over it you're you're kind of a douche because it requires a lot of resources whereas i2p since it's inherently a peer-to-peer -peer network torrenting is is really chill it actually helps the network out uh, but yeah, this is just basic um, basic how to use I2P, right? Now it's just as easy as setting up Tor, or at least if you have the Tor browser already installed, it's just as easy as setting up Tor. It's an EXE that you download, you click next a few times, uh, wait a few minutes, you know, wait a little bit for it to, uh, like I say, get integrated into the network, and then you'll actually be able to start reaching EAP sites. But like and comment, tag the algorithm, follow me on Odyssey, and have a great day.